Hello and welcome back under the dome. Welcome back to Encased and playing hardball. We have done it. The grand experiment, the emulator project. Well, we I guess we stood there or something. What exactly happened is unclear. But time has passed apparently because there are people. William Tag, an unknown person. Katarzyna is standing over there. She's not part of the party anymore. And where well, we can literally sense it, the maelstrom has receded to the center of the dome just as we ask it. So and now there is way more to explore around here. So that's certainly a thing. We were able to communicate with it. That is like, that is quite interesting. However, we didn't get any experience for this grand uh, experience. But we'll see. So, and we, I remind you that we had some very nice developments during the last phase because we are a pretty good survivalist now. Reached level four, the first, uh, actually the first um, skill. Was it actually a skill? Oh, it's an ability. No, it's ability. So the first ability that we pushed to the fourth level. And now we are actually a treasure hunter. The chance of a lucky find is doubled. That's just great. And we can cope with another relic. That is even better because this way we are now using this, the Eye of God relic, which gives us psyche and evasion. And that is truly awesome. Also, we are going into the Mad Max situation looking at our boots here right well that's the best that we could get at the moment also they make us really fast which i don't understand because they should actually slow us down with all that metal but apparently they don't so it's fine so and we are not even too hungry after this whole thing but we are carrying way too much so let's put it down on the floor and then let's talk to our friends here um which is actually katarzyna but otherwise, like the, is there anything? No, nothing happened. Okay. Yeah, well, let's just talk with them then. Hey, Yoko, what's what's up? What's going on? Yoko looks up as you approach. Research mode. Yoko, hey. You hear the characteristic scanning sound, and a green ray quickly runs through your body from head to toe. Ah. Uh. Level of residual psycho radiation, average within normal range. Vital indicators, normal. Cognitive function, normal. Glad you're okay, Senpai. Yoko blinks her eyes in content. Oh, that's that's good. Well, thank you for the for the checkup. Well, what happened while while I was uh, in that emulator? Senpai, you have become something of a conduit for the Maelstrom's anomalous energy. Unfortunately, I can't say more precisely because I didn't do any research. I assessed the risk for the project and did not enter the restricted area. Here are my approximate calculations. Uh -huh. The robot girl turns the Kyra screen towards you and displays a huge array of data on you. Well, you know, it would have been nice, uh, you know, if you if you had uh, talked about that, you know, that uh, those calculations beforehand. But well. Okay, see you later. I think we should firstly uh, look Your around a bit. Yoko slings the rifle over her shoulder. Research mode. I'm going back to Magellan. Thank you for your collaboration, Senpai. Um, I actually wanted you to wait here. But well. Now I guess that's not happening. And Katarzyna? Looking closely at the woman studying the indicators on the remote control panel, you realize that in front of you is Katarzyna Belitskaya. Well, actually, I notice her uh, immediately, but well. When you approach, she presses her hands to her face, looking at you, then at the devices, then back at you. Hey, Kata, how's it going? Did I succeed? Is that really you? And are you okay? The white cautiously inquires. Well, of course it's us, right? We feel actually quite okay. So, what happened while we were in the emulator? Oh, a lot, actually. Katya brisks up. Well, Katya, 
That's the first time we hear your nickname. Do tell. I finally slept in a normal bed and found an actual hot shower here. Yes, they also serve excellent set meals. I realize that the employees of the emulator have some fine living conditions here. Why the question, though? And why are you grinning? Katarzyna looks at you in confusion. Oh, you are so sweet, but well. Come on, let's get going. Dalitskaya nods readily. Yes, I too thought we should stick together. Is that so? You will watch over me, won't you? I will. Kotya. Kotya is your nickname. So, well. So let's see, do we have anything new? No. You just have the stuff that you had before, huh? Yeah. Well, that's fine. That is quite fine. By the way, that's... Oh yeah, we never really looked into our uh, inventory after that rat situation. Okay, well... Um, that was actually rather convenient to have her here at the party, in the party. That's Henrietta up there. Well, Katarzyna, like, if you can't... Do you... What, what is going on here? Can you tell us something? Casts around nervously. I'm starting to worry again. Frankly, I'm straight up scared. No, it's fine. Let's have just let's have a chat. Okay, just don't ask me about what happened at Magellan, okay? You won't, right? No, if you don't want to. So, you know, there uh, there is something new to talk about, I guess. Let's discuss the dome communities. The white perks up. Well, I can tell you about all of them. I'm a scientist. I know all sorts of complex topics. Ask. Stop grinning like that. Well, I'm just happy. I'm just happy. So, here. Well, what what do, do you have to say about the new committee? Cringes in disgust. I didn't really like Kronos, but the new committee became even worse. Their laws are too strict, and there are too many of them. You can inadvertently violate several at once and immediately become an outcast. I have no idea what Nakamura is thinking. Sounds like a bureaucratic nightmare. Well, and what do you think about the picnic neutral zone? Well, the fact that they don't judge people by their characteristics from the Cronus database is already good enough. In fact, the less they look like the committee, the better. Belitskaya is thinking about something. Well, do you want to share more? No? Well, okay then, and then what about the Phalanx? Your companion raises her palms in protest. What, you want to go there? Thanks, but I pass. They're kind of, you know, warlike. I'm scared of those. Don't be. Come on, Kotya. Don't be scared. When we are together, everything is fine. Um. Also, we, you know, the Phalanx, we've we've encountered them multiple, multiple times. But okay. Admittedly, we never went to their camp or anything. So, what do you think about Carmen Heights? Katarzyna hesitates for a while, choosing her words carefully. How do I say this? They're kind of cool, but they can't agree on anything. Can't say if I could live there or not. Okay, well, that sounds... Carmen Heights, that sounds like democracy of the rather ineffective sort. Huh? Well, and what do you think about the church? I think about them sometimes. They come off as creepy. There is some sense in what they're doing. I guess it's better to be happy in a fictional world than to suffer all your life in reality. Well, that is something, you know, that is actually, there's some wisdom there. That's for sure. Well, and what is your opinion of the Fops? They are filthy, gross psychos who live in a trash heap. They don't even have toilets. What am I even supposed to say about them? Just speak your thing, but well. Okay the then, Any, th anything the else? Okay, just don't ask me about what happened at Magellan, okay? You won't, right? No, it's fine. I'm not going to. So, well, can we talk about something personal? Personal questions. Ask away, but I'm not promising anything. The white's gaze grows even more wary, and she turns slightly paler. Well, you know, how... what about how you lived before the incident? Katarzyna squints at you in disbelief. 
Is that the trick question? I was a respected employee, the most important person in the whole department. Okay, maybe not the most important, but the key personnel for sure. Okay. Bella's guy grows gloomy. And to tell you the truth, I've confessed about it myself. But you can't help stealing when all the silvers who run your department steal hundreds of thousands. At some point you start to think that you're a fool if you don't take part in this. <sighs> Sorry, I don't want to talk about it. Well, you know, it's just the, you know, the day-to-day -day corruption, I guess, right? And, well, you know, we are also uh, morally and ethically challenged, but that's why we two are getting along so well, you know? So, let's talk about something else. Okay, just don't ask me about what happened at my Yeah, it's fine. So, and, well, let's talk about our friends. Uh, do you have any new thoughts? What about Crumb? No, okay, and you call? I often saw her in our laboratory. Okay, well, that's nothing new, a fox. Makes big eyes and switches to a loud no, it's fine. And, and Sparrow, yeah, protecting you well, yeah, and cheerful Jack. Okay, that's fine. It's all everything we've consciously. talked about before. All right, then, then let's get going, Katarzyna, but good talking to you. Good that you are loosening up. I really like the sound. That's actually pretty cool. So there. Ah, the is the whole team assembled. Well, let's go. Oh, let's talk to this guy here. Why is he not lighted up? Well, because no one is lighted up. Okay. William Tag. Mild psychic irradiation. Pretty good at hand to hand. Did you just run in the way, Kadajna? Or Kotya? We don't recognize this man right away, perhaps because we'd only seen him before through tinted laboratory glass. He was one of the Halo Eye patients the emulator employees were holding in isolation. His badge reads William Tag. He looks at us. Narrow white bands shine around his irises, but his gaze is calm and collected, although it's very dumb. Oh, okay. Hello there. Well, you look much better than the last time we saw you. William puts his mop aside and confidently points an index finger at the ceiling. I will tell you, it's not easy to think. Constant distraction. My head is light, however. Crossword. We do crossword. However, I don't do it very well. Scientists watch over me. Responsibility. Uh, okay, well, you are really not the lightest bulb uh, in the chandelier. Uh, and that's even... Why, why do you have a shift? That's even more reason, you know, that you shouldn't have any weapons, buddy, but well. Anyway, I must mop. He summarizes happily. He grabs his mop and begins polishing the floor again, although it's already squeaky clean. Well, can't be too clean, right? Well, what are you working on? I must mop. He says with a deep, steady voice and begins dragging the mop to and fro with renewed energy. Well, as long as he's happy. And it's always good to live in a clean environment. Oh. Phone receiver in hand. Her face is lit up with an expression of pure triumph. The calling from everywhere, saying that Maelstrom is moving. I don't want to assume anything, but if it really is retreating to the center, then trade routes will be restored soon. Carmine Heights and Phalanx headquarters will no longer be isolated. Okay, well, what time is it, by the way? Russo hangs up the receiver and hugs you tight. I oh, yeah, that. Believe we made it. If we were in a movie, I'd look deep into your eyes. But since our relationship is strictly platonic. Well, you know, that was surprising, but uh, our, you know, that does need to be platonic, you know? You know? Katarzyna is, uh, is looking at us. Shocked from the side. The phone on the table breaks out with a jarring ring. Henrietta picks up the receiver. Project emulator, Director Russo speaking. 
Madam Chairman. Yes, they're here. Well, Rosa holds out the receiver. Nakamura. She exclaims in a dramatic whisper. Well, Nakamura, uh, uh, I think she's the one that that is the president, right? The president of Carmen Heights or something. Well, hello. Well, let's say hello. Oh, no, well, I already said well. <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> now, let's say hello. Like, take the receiver and greet. Well, yeah, we don't need to be so formal, huh? Because, uh, well, the, the, she seems to be a politician. Or wasn't she one of, the one on the elevator, like, right in the beginning when we entered the dome? Nakamura, I think so, right? Let's just say hello. I'm glad to meet you. Even if it's long distance. The cold, melodic voice answers you. Um, how did you do that with your eye? Is that an implant? Well... Nakamura pauses and you hear the subtle click of a button through the receiver. On behalf of the new committee and its official citizen and other inhabitants, I thank you for your conscientious assistance. I'll be waiting for you at the council building in the city. Please be present for the upcoming meeting. Now her voice sounds different. She must have switched to speaker mode. Uh huh. Okay, well. Uh, well, we are looking forward to meet you in person. To meeting you in person. That's, by the way, better English. It's wrong to say to looking, looking forward to meet, like the verb. It's always the, the ing form. Well, no, it was a one-off. You are never. We are never going to work for the emulator project again. No, no. Actually, it was fun. So, yeah, we are looking glad. Uh, we are looking uh, forward to meeting you in person. The chairwoman ignores this. As soon as you finish, she continues to speak. Your service has caught the attention of some who erroneously believe they wield real power. They'll approach you with proposals, which might even seem tempting at first glance. Don't agree to anything, and don't make any deals until we have the chance to speak. Well, now she's a bit less sympathetic, but well, I mean, yeah, I look she's a leader. To next meeting. Best of luck to you. The dial tone sounds from the receiver. I don't think she's really looking forward to that, but well. Henrietta elegantly shifts her gaze from the phone to you. Welcome to big time politics, eh? Don't get your hopes up. Nakamura isn't a very nice person, but I personally prefer not nice Nakamura over nice dilly dallyers. I don't know what she told you, but you do not want to mess with her. Yeah. Well, actually, of course, it's uh, it's better, you know. Depends what values drive her, and then it doesn't really matter if she's nice or not, um, because we will not. You know, she will not become our girlfriend or anything. So anyway, well, let's in the heat let's of the go moment, on. Russo gives you a peck on the cheek. Damn, I oh, thank you. It off. You're one smart cookie. Go have a drink. You deserve it. I'll write a message to the treasury. Those guys owe you a solid bonus. Well, thank you, Henrietta. Well. I don't know what an Atta girl is, but let's give it to her. Henrietta proudly wraps herself on the chest with her small fist. Nobody will argue with that. But don't waste your time talking me up. Go rest. I'll start on deciphering the telemetry. Well, Henrietta, I don't consider it at all a waste of time to talk with you, actually. But okay, so, see you later. We will... Yeah, we will check the the place out and see what the what what else we can do. See you later. Okay, so there. So, our servo shell. Let's have it. So that's her office. Henrietta is there. That's Sandra Malverde. Sandra, hello. Do we know each other? This woman, Sandra Malverde, was formerly sitting in confinement in the emulator lab, but now she's walking freely along the corridors of the research facility with a pile of some papers in her hands. 
However, however, she definitely looks much better than before. Ah, yeah, that's good. I like that. So we get a, di a direct uh, feedback uh, that our action was actually a good one. The silver looks absently in our direction. A barely noticeable ring shines around her iris, but her expression is placid. Oh, okay. She puts a hand to her chest. Sandra, I'm doing my job. Uh, yeah, well, you look much better than when we saw you behind the glass. I'm feeling fine. Maelstrom is not here anymore. I have no headache. Malwordy answers with an intonation of a diligent child. She demandingly extends a cupped hand. Can I have a piece of sugar? Uh, sorry, we don't have any sugar. Well, let's look at the papers she's holding. We look more closely at the Silver's papers. They are not real documents, but dummy drafts marked with different colored pens. Apparently, the scientists monitor the circulation of these papers around the building with the help of this color coding system. Okay, so she's part of an experiment and they are checking out uh, how her mental capacity is uh, progressing, I guess. Huh? Poor thing. So, what are you busy with? I'm doing my job. Malverdi repeats with such a tone of voice as if it was not her but someone else saying the same phrase a few seconds ago. Uh huh. Okay, so actually, well, I mean, she's she's better, but she's not really good. Huh? But well, let's move away. Poor thing. But well. Ah, can we close this door and then get out of the servo shell here? Sneak mode, quick save, and let's have a short look into this computer here. Let's hack it. Hacking the computer. Karma's computer, what is in there? Hacking successful. Karma's terminal interface is confusing at first. It features neither a list of commands nor a line for input. The system has a graphical interfa interface that is controlled by a small black arrow, which is moved by means of an additional set of keys. Programs are launched by selecting icons on the screen with the arrow. Hard to imagine how someone could find this convenient. Hmm. Yeah. There are many icons on the screen. Some of them we can guess at, others not so much. One is in the form of a mailbox, probably mail. Or is she finding us now? What is she doing there? Yeah, just move along. Probably mail. So let's move the pointer using the keyboard block and open the mail. I would like the humor behind this one, basically. So that's that was a primitive mouse pointer, of course, but used with the keyboard, I guess. We find a long list of emails. All but two are marked with the lock symbol. When we try to open them, we are asked for a password. Perhaps Karma somehow sensed she would soon be gone and restricted access to this information. Mm -hmm. Let's read the message titled B Purcell Message 179. Text displayed on the screen. My dearest disciple, I respectfully use the word disciple in place of patient, which I consider an infringement on your exceptional gift. I'm all right. Our treatise is unbearable in our maritime climate, but tolerable when there's a fireplace at home and I spend my evenings near it, as always with a book in my hand. I'm still under a dark cloud since hearing the news about Flight 476, a terrible tragedy. Let's talk about it and how you experience a sense of loss that affects humanity as a whole, but not you directly. I'll be waiting for your message on Thursday, September 16th, as usual. I give you credit, you are adhering rigorously to the schedule. Think about it, but don't rationalize it. Express your feelings, not your critical assessment. Have a great day, Dr. Benjamin pa Purcell, September 10th, 1976. Is she a robot? Or something else? Like that, or th she has a... Well, we found that she was she was lacking empathy and you know social skills. That was for sure. Maybe she or she has some form of mental problem or disability. Huh? Go, let's go back to the main section with emails. We find a long list of emails. Okay, no, she's just not seeing us. 
That's good. Let's read the message title Urgent Serious Deadline Violation. Takes his display on the screen. Karma. What happened to Greenberg? Why isn't he answering email? And why aren't you, as the Carmen Heights emulator supervisor, ringing the alarm? Get in touch with him and his group and remind them those drivers are urgently needed. If he doesn't respond, send someone out to the camp. I'll attach the coordinates at the end of this message. JR. Ah, oh, yeah. That would have been another option to get the coordinates, I guess, huh? if we had murdered her here, I guess. Like, as total psychopaths. But, well, yeah. So, that's it, then. Main section of emails. Close the email. Well, it's, we can we can step away from there. Okay. But that's nice. So, we, we got some additional... Uh, by the way, let's look at her. She can give a pep talk. Learnability 98. She's also pretty good at hand-to-hand -hand for some reason. Although I, I think she was a silver, right? But well. Getting back in the servo shell. And then... Just go over here and yeah, there, there are the others, okay. So actually I think, I guess we can talk with everybody like about what happened. Um, so let's talk to everybody that we don't want in our party. First, and I think... Well, I mean, I don't know what is, what is it we have to do now. Oh, J like journal, but it's not journal. What do we have to do now? On the verge of change? The emulator worked as it should. We managed to contact Maelstrom and the anomaly retreated. The threat of death is no more, but our journey is just beginning. Talk to Duruso to find out what to do next. We have been invited to a meeting of the council. The meeting will take place in the city. In the council building. Security has been notified of our arrival and will let us through without hindrance. Ah yeah, that's also here in Junktown. Our story. Head of the new committee, Kimiko Nakamura, has contacted us and invited us to the council meeting, which will be held in the city in the near future, okay? Yeah, so that's basically the next thing where we need to go. Yeah. Okay, so... Nothing else here. Main quests. On the verge of change, yeah. Thing most precious, the leg. Tribute to the memory. Uh, there are certainly more of these dog tags. So then, okay. So let's. Uh, I think we are taking Fox with us. Although, I mean, I do feel that we. Katajina, crumbs. We could also actually take Sparrow with us. Or maybe like with the council meeting, maybe a personality like Cheerful Jack could also be pretty good. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's talk with Crump first. And uh, here, so Crump, what's Crump up? Crump stares at you for a long time. Then, without a word, pats your shoulder with a heavy hand. He's obviously glad to see you again, although he doesn't show it. Hey, Crump, what happened while we were in the emulator? The makes a helpless gesture. Well, there was so much radiation. The sensors went right off the scale. Everyone panicked, thought you were gone, <laughs> and there you are, still breathing. Well, glad that you are glad. Come on, let's talk the a bit. The orange smirks with his slit mouth. Well, I don't see why not. Let's go. A lot of folks here under the dome could use a good beating. Okay, yeah, well, indeed. On. Just tell that Katagina not to bother me. Lies a lot. Fuss is around beside the point. 
Yeah, we noticed that too, but Remember, uh, yeah, you know, maybe maybe it could be very world, interesting with her. Um, so, Crumb, let's firstly check your stuff. Ah, yeah, because you could need something, right? Well, we upgraded this here, the Vira. Um, and oh no, we don't have the gunsmithing. Okay, and the gunsmithing was the te was the tech, right? Yeah, okay. But that's fine. So crumb. Um. Oh yeah. So we wanted to give out some stuff, so he can have the ordinary backpack. And we have one girdle with us. You can have this here. Because I don't know if if we may if we may be uh, have our guys uh, do something, you know, in a situation that it could be useful. So how about we give him uh, the funnel? We have several of the funnel relics, Triskeli. I think the funnel could be good for him, but also for Sparrow, actually. And the problem... Oh, we have a problem. Yoko... Yoko has the... Ah, uh, uh, Yoko has the uh, the pins with the... Uh, Yoko. That's a bit bad. We need to go back to Magellan, actually. But well, so Crump gets this stuff. And I think yeah, the work gloves. That's this hand to hand. We don't have anything better, right? For him, no, we don't. We don't really. And this here, it's good with biochem, cryogenic. However, no defense class, energy resistance would be way better in fortitude. But mechanical. Uh, oh yeah, the filter on pens are actually way better. How would it look on him? Okay, well, uh, but I think he can rather have this here, the rear admiral pants. Um, and also the Honest John work code with criminal, criminal plus 20. I think that's actually a good thing because he's not our total career criminal here with, with 30 points. Movement speed, pickpocketing, yeah. Line side. Yeah. Honest John. So maybe actually this, but I think uh, Fox had the other one as well, right? So let's give the funnel to him. Evasion plus seven. That's actually a good thing. Um, and then we are just talking with him a little bit. I wonder, by the way, if uh, if the fortune can actually go negative. Oh yeah, he's got eight, so we shouldn't uh, reduce it. Uh, it's fine. Let's just keep him like this. No cap for him, though. So, Crumb, what are your thoughts? The bruiser quizzically sticks out his chin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are continuing with the old plan. Did people when necessary? The muscle head cracks his knuckles and smiles gracefully. It's a great plan. I love it. All right, let's go. Yeah, actually, I wanted. No, ah, wait, wait. The wanted bruiser to talk some more. sticks out his chin. Mm -hmm. So, come on, let's talk about something. The bruiser looks at you questioningly. Mm hmm. Oh yeah. So actually, so. Let's talk about all these communities. Some interest flashes in Crump's gaze. I've seen all sorts of freaks here, yeah? Who would you want to ask about? Well, what do you think about this new committee? Karen shakes his head in disapproval. Fascists. All they do is tighten the screws and spread bureaucracy. And the prisons are nasty there. Uh-huh, okay, well, yeah. Not sure if they are really, like, fascists, because that is also a thing about a certain economic um, system, but well, we take your word. And what about the picnic? Your companion smiles slightly. Not enough strength, but the approach is fine. Okay, 
well, yeah, well, we also we al already felt that uh, they could be in constant need of help, right? Oh, well, and what do you think about the phalanx? They are strong, and they are cramped here. Fuck knows what to expect from them. Maybe they'll even start a war. He says after a pause. Okay, that is interesting and kind of terrifying. So we are looking at a civil war situation here, huh? Or what? And what about Carmen Hyde? The bruiser scratches his cheekbone. The new committee is the opposite. No order at all. What they live off is unclear. But I wouldn't want that kind of freedom. Okay, so basically just a chaotic democracy. And well, what is your relationship with this church? The brute squints his eyes. For sectarian schmucks that they are, they live too well. They're not as simple as they look, right? Well, I would never have thought that you know there wasn't that there wasn't something behind them. Uh, and their tech and all that, but yeah, I guess we'll find out eventually. And what do you think about the fops? An expression of sympathy appears on the orange's face. I've seen psychos. You know, it's not their fault that their brains got fried up. Yeah, well, let's see how they actually react now that the maelstrom has retreated a bit. The okay, then, so. Looks at you questioningly. How, how about we discuss some more personal the matters? The grunts long and hoarsely. I'm not a big fan of talking about myself. Well, sometimes you need to do things that you don't like so much, just, you know, for some bigger purpose, for example. How did you live before getting under the dome? The orange scratches the back of his head. Well, if you look into it, he lived well. Mum was weird, and Dad was pretty cool, though I can hardly remember him. You know how it goes. Went out for cigarettes and just split. But my mum loved him anyway. She said he was one brave son of a gun during the war. Uh huh. Wh which war? What kind of war? He thinks hard, then waves his hand in displeasure. I don't remember a damn thing from childhood. I got a lot on my mind. Memory's not as good as it used to be. Felix Mitchell. There was such a kid in our class. Asshole. Everyone was afraid of him. I snuck up on him and smashed his face with the school gate. And then I fought his brother and all the punks. Basically, they threw me into the slammer straight from the school desk. Oh, wow. Felix Mitchell, that rings a bell, actually. Um, that rings a bell. Felix Mitchell, could, could it be that we ran into the guy? But, well, you were c quite courageous. Also for stepping up for everyone. And well, I guess no one stood up for you then, right? That's just what happens. And how was it in prison? The orange cackles. Well, duh, like prison. Hmm. Even then I was still one heck of a fighter. A guy with no brakes. In prison you can't slow down at all. If some bully pushes you around, gotta hit him back. Doesn't matter if he's bigger, if you don't put him in place, It'll be worse. Crump size. Well, yeah, we heard that often, yeah. Heard about Ronnie Cray? We were in the same jail. Became friends with him. Guess that's all. There isn't much interesting shit going on in prison. I don't recommend it, if you ask me. The orange grins. Mm hmm. Yeah, understandable. And, well, what did you do after being released? The bruiser throws up his hands. The Cray brothers gave me a job. Ronnie was a hothead. Reggie was a bit smarter, you know, business type. Such a thoughtful guy. Uh-huh. I worked for them for a few years. Shook down all sorts of hucksters, bookmakers, underground bottling shops. In the end, Reggie did what he always wanted. He bought himself a club. I became friends with Doug Price there, and he got me into the underground boxing. Crump's face, already grim, is twisted into a bleak grimace. Well, now the real question is, did you like that? They still talk about me like I beat McLean, but that's bullshit. It was a draw. Boxing is just like that. You get in and you stay until the very end while you can still box. I would have stayed, but my stupid ass got back into prison in Broadmoor. It's not even a prison. More of a loony bin with bars, and that's where it was worst. His eyes glaze over and he becomes silent for a while. Uh-huh. Broadmoor? Not a prison. 
A loony bin with bars? Uh-huh. Ah, because, well, they thought that you had, uh, that Crump had some form of psychological problems or something, huh? Well, Crump let's talk about something his else. Hand to stop you. Wait. I was talking about my old man at first. I always wanted to look him in the eye, ask why he left. Well, that is always a thing to know, right? Maybe we can help you. Rumor has it, Dad's here, under the dome. And I thought, what's there to lose? At least, we'll talk. He struggles to utter the last words. Well, why not? I mean, if we run into him, then... What is his name? The orange frowns. Never mind. What do you want to discuss? Not, well... The let's talk about something else. Questioningly. Hmm? Well, how, let's talk about well, our I'm companions. Not a fan addition, but okay, ask. Okay, well, I have the feeling. Reluctantly. I have the feeling that you're not going to tell anything new about them, right? The bruiser's gaze becomes scornful and derisive. You watch this woman. One day she'll rob you and run away. I got a nose for such. Oh well, I fear you are right, but I still want to believe in the goodness of people's hearts. That's really true. But well, we'll see. Then if she does something like that, then we have to react accordingly. And what about Yoko? The bruiser shivers. Oh, a killer robot that looks like a child. Creepy. Yeah, if you look at if you look at it from that angle, it is indeed creepy. But I I like her. She's sweet, isn't she? Sweet little robot. What about Fox? Oh, she's mad, of course. But I'd hold on to her. Reliable. Yeah. But I mean, you and Fox, you are actually a good team. Although she tried to poke a neck a, a, a knife into your neck. In that other situation there, but well. And what about Sparrow? The orange thinks hard. Can't say it briefly, and I don't like long talks. He and I don't like each other, that's understandable. But he's got major problems with his head, even worse than I do. Uh -huh. I usually stay clear of such people. Yeah, I also think there's a huge complex problem there. But well, maybe we talk about that another time. Cheerful Jack? At first he pissed me off, big mouth. But then I looked closer at him. He's a fine guy, a tough one. He gives a thumbs up. Yeah, good. All right. So well, Crump, The though. bruiser looks at you questioningly. Crump nods complacently. All right. What did you want I to discuss? I think we need to talk with the others first, and well, I guess we we are picking you up at the bar. How about that? Crump shrugs. All right then. If you need me, you know where to find me. All right. So I think did we just get some form of uh, companion quest or something? No, companion quest. No. So his dad is in the under the dome. That's good to know. Okay. So. Well, let's talk to Cheerful Jack. I don't think that we will have him around, actually. So I think we might even... Oh, let's... Yeah. Yeah, we need Yoko anyway. We need to get to Yoko to get the uh, items. So I guess we could take Cheerful Jack to this meeting. Um. But I actually... I would like... I want to have Fox and Katarzyna on one in the party. Well, let's talk with Fox. Fox lifts her shoulders slightly. She goes around you in a circle, stretching her neck, tilting her head, and opening her mouth as if getting a taste of the air. Uh, okay, Fox. You smell like maelstrom. I like. The woman nods in satisfaction, looking at you through the slits in the mask. Well, you know, that is good. That you smell something that you like. Well, can you tell us what happened while we were in the she emulator? A soft, whimpering sound. I saw you. There in the white light. And in my dreams. Then the dreams were gone. From me. From everyone. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, we are we are back now. Come on. Let's Fox go together. Contentedly through the mask. Let's go. Yeah, and also I'd like to talk. Woman. 
but I'm coming with you. Yeah, we know that you guys don't like each other, but Fox. Two furious, unblinking eyes sparkle at you through the mask's slots. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, let's talk. She lets out a snort. Well. So, well, what is your opinion uh, on these communities oh, here? This is gonna be fun. She says mockingly, raising her mask. What do you think about this new committee? I'm not surprised that Kronos turned to shit. He was heading that way for a while. But the fact that it became so shit really scares me. Uh huh. Well, kind of, we kind of didn't hear anything positive about them yet. What do you think about Picnic? The woman shrugs. They don't rely on anyone. They do everything themselves. They're cool. Yeah, okay, and the Phalanx? They scare me. Well, not them, but Zemeckis. She chuckles meaningfully. Zemeckis, okay. Zemeckis is someone who scares Fox. That is interesting to know, but yeah, I guess like her traumatic past, uh, I guess maybe the guy is connected to her, uh, to her past, but well, and what about Carmen Heights? Rolls her eyes. Oh, Carmen Heights. I hate the atmosphere there. It's like one big troubled family. I'm not a fan of the concept of family in any form. Well, you know, without family, there is no society and without society, there is no future. Yeah? No families, no healthy children, mentally healthy children. You know, it's it's st children need stability. It's sad, but it is the truth. And without without uh, functioning, functioning and functional families, there is simply no future. So what about the church? The question is unexpectedly difficult for her. Fox considers her answer for a long time. Uh huh. What are we doing in the meantime? A lot of it is pretty disgusting. The drooling, dependent adepts, the aggressive proselytizing, and so on. But there's another side to it. Many people want to escape to the virtual world of the temple. The church is disgusting. But they deserve respect for giving people that chance. Your companion touches the mask for a moment, deep in thought. Interesting. I wouldn't have thought that you know a word like proselytizing. But yeah, and what do you think of the fops? I'm one myself, sort of. A fop is like a child with a shotgun. You need to be careful how you handle it. But there's no point being afraid. Yeah. Can't say it better than that. She nods along with her thoughts. Okay. Well, she thanks for... Snort. Well. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. So, and well, you know, let's talk about some more personal she stuff. I don't like talking about myself. Well, you know, I thought you know we are getting along fine. You might want to talk about some other stuff. So, could you tell us something about Red this mask? Eyes look at you directly through the slit. After a moment. Fox lifts the mask to her forehead. It's uh -huh. easier for me. I don't have to answer anyone's tactless questions. Feel what I'm getting at. She scowls at you. However, she does not lower the mask. Attention. Attention. Well, but who, who have you been in your former life? Daria Dombrovskaya. Bluing. I came here back in 72. Hands down the worst choice I've made in my life. As for going mad, well, I could pick that option even if I stayed back home. There was no need to travel so far. Fox looks at you eloquently. Yeah, well... This is the first time we meet someone who can become crazy at the snap of the our fingers. Snorts indignantly. I didn't choose this. It's all Maelstrom. You were going to see it, weren't you? Well, go ahead. You can ask a question. Just buy a mask in advance. Yeah. Okay. So, let's lift the mask. Why do you behave differently when wearing it? You're unawares. The girl draws back as far as the mask's tie string allows, staring at you in confusion and dismay. Uh? We'll discuss it another time, okay? She pulls the mask free of your grip and puts it back to her face in relief. Uh -huh. She shakes her head. I don't like talking about myself. 
No, it's fine then. So, and well, let's do, let's talk about something else. Well, so, what about the companions? The mask with visible effort. Not a great idea. I don't like people, and I don't really get along with them either. But I'll try mm. to be fair and do my best to say something good about each of them. Go ahead, ask. Fox awaits your question. Well, what do you think about Crumb? Twitch in a faint smile. Okay, so I think we have all heard all of that. Like the coward, Yuko. A robot is a robot. But she seems to be capable of learning. Whatever she becomes in the end depends solely on you. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, we. I hope we are a good example for her. Yeah, like, I mean, a, at least about the big things, the big decisions. And Sparrow? Your companion smirks indulgently. A lot of pathos, a lot of punching himself in the chest and the constant me, me, me. Such aggression towards the bandits. I don't think it's about principles. He, she, I don't know what to call it. They're just out for revenge. Yeah, well, there's certain, certainly some form of narcissist, narcissist uh, thing going on, right? And even if there's nothing but the revenge. This determination is commendable. Sparrow is trying. He clearly made a great effort to become who he is. She lightly touches her mask. Now that's also true, and that is surely something that we can respect. Well, and cheerful Jack? Fox struggles to suppress a smile. He talks as much as he drinks, which is a lot. Sometimes I wish he'd shut up. But then again, he sometimes has useful shit to say. Yeah, okay then. So, let's have a look at your inventory. Um... Yeah, this is also the Honest John. Do-it-yourself do boots, movement speed, and she has the, yeah, the Pulsar gloves. Ah, but we have something better for her now, I think, right? Like these? No. Melee. Hand-to-hand. -hand. Ah, I think we had some melee gloves didn't we but well so the do-it-yourself boots they're actually pretty good yeah we don't need hand to hand for her of course well then she's got this one here the workers belt that's fine and we do have this ordinary backpack here I guess she can wear it And actually, like how about this one here? Isaac pants, saved AP plus one. Mechanical resistance is five. Yeah, well, this is way, way better for her. The Isaac pants. However, she doesn't need more biochem. She really doesn't need biochem. But everything else is really, uh, is really good. Biochem resistance, yeah. Also, it's actually, actually it fits her. Ah, it's actually pants. It always looked like a skirt with this thingy here. Like, you know, like more like this Arabic thing. Oh, yeah, okay. Actually, it looks pretty good on her. Yeah, let's, let's keep it for her, huh? On the other end, the evasion, that's the thing, that's why we had it, 43, 48, yeah, yeah, but yeah, all in all, yeah, also the, uh, the mechanical, the mechanical resistance actually that's po I think it's possibly better like this so she can keep these high-tech weapons mechanical energy and cryo resistance and these are just our applied things we need more cryo fortitude and tech by the way she she said she was a tech right I wonder why she's actually not good in tech technician but well 
I mean, all that she knows has been uh, erased anyway, I guess. Okay then, so for the sheaf, to upgrade this one, the fang sheaf, we need also gunsmithing 100, but we definitely have all the stuff, I think, melee weapons, yeah, I think so. Oh, and the biochem resistance is plus 100 with this one, yeah. Okay. Okay then. So, but Fox. Two furious, unblinking eyes sparkle at you through the mask's slots. Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll see each other later. The fox hunches over a bit and quietly hisses. I will be at the arena. Yeah. See you there. She leaves with a snort. All right. And then, yeah, I think we are actually taking Sparrow along. Let's take Sparrow. Could be fun. Well, fuck me sideways. Jack shakes your hand. Hello, Jack. What happened? Where were you? What, what, what happened while we were in the emulator? There was a movie named Piercing Time, a classic fantasy. When the main character, Doug McConnery, entered the portal, the film tape was overexposed. It made everything bright and contrasting, and McConnery seemed to dissolve in the flash of the portal. I watched you disappear in a white glow and remembered this very movie. The actor shakes his head, as if completely unable to believe that you're standing in front of him. Well, that's that's a nice uh, comparison he there. He makes a helpless gesture. Sorry I missed your return. I was drunk. Do you have any documents for this well... You know, I, we won't take it too personally, uh, too personal. So, well, come Jack on, come along. With his signature smile. Say no more. I'm in. Let's go. Excellent. Huh? It's high time for grand actions together with Katarzyna, right? Well, Katarzyna is a bit, uh, I think she's impressed with him. But well, let's check your Inventory first, cheerful Jack. Got this stuff. Actually, like the pants. I you also have the Isaac pants. I kind of like them better. Due to the evasion. But well, so we don't have another backpack for you. This here is also the regular. Archimedes lap belt. Um, this one here doesn't give any resistance, but well, theoretically, we could actually give you the the pants and then the plot armor coat. But I actually I have it kind of reserved for Sparrow because it's Sparrow style, Sparrow style action points. The action points are pretty good though, I guess. Evasion plus 20. You've got 29. And the 20 additional hit points. But no. Really no resistance with that thing. That's the problem. That is really the problem. Parsec boots. Well, your homoestasis engineering boots. They are actually uh, also better, unfortunately. Heat resistance cryo. So how much do you have? Actually, are your resistance are pretty good, actually. And Mr. Hammer. Yeah, the melee weapon manual. That's the thing. Oh, maybe we should actually look out for one because we wanted to have the scalpel as well. So, yeah. Well, it's a bit sad, but we can't really give him anything that's really useful. Also, we can't get to our stash. But maybe he can have the Triskili here. So, yeah. A 
I mean, 15 points is really significant. But 5 evasion... Also the filter on pens, so maybe actually, well, we've, we, I think we neglected Sparrow a lot um, over time, so I guess uh, it would be a good thing to give Sparrow this one here. Yeah, I think Sparrow has the worst stuff, by the way. So what kind of isolated engineer? Yeah, that's for the melee weapons. Yeah, that's the best. So, and you are our person. You You are actually... You are a good technician. Oh. All types of resistance plus five. Oh, he's actually pretty good now. 120. Energy resistance plus 15 while tipsy. Oh, that's why he's, uh, he wants the alcohol, huh? Melee weapons and the contraptions. Oh. So he improved very significantly. Mechanical damage, jamming chance. Well, a melee damage is actually, is actually, uh, and that is, that is mechanical damage. Oh yeah, that's, that's actually a nice synergy here for, for Cheerful Jack. The mechanical damage plus 15%. Relic dust ability and the devil's core throwing range is up to 15 meters. That's actually interesting. So, and then here we have the record breaks your weapon. What? I wonder if his special weapon can actually break, but that would be interesting. And the pound. Jump towards the target within a 12 meter radius. Strike and knock out the target for one round. I think that's something that we already saw uh, in uh, enemies. Yeah. Okay, well. So, I still like the movement speed better. That's for sure. So we don't have anything better for Cheerful Jack. But he already got some good stuff on the other hand, so it's fine, I guess. Well, that means let's talk with him. Keep Cheerful. In mind, I'm writing a script for my documentary, so if you want to have some expressive dialogues, you'd better think them through in good time. So what do you want? Jack holds his Kairos mic out to your face. Well, let's just talk Branson a bit. Nods oh. Readily. I don't mind. In this dull desert, all you can do is drink and chat. Ask away. And um, yeah, I guess we need to work a bit uh, with you. So discuss the personal matters. The appears at the bottleneck sticking out of his pocket. I got to have a little drink during such conversations. Although, honestly, there's little that can embarrass me. My first job was as a life model at an art school. Yeah, okay. I guess there's actually nothing Branson that we really nods, can talk about. Friendly. I don't mind. In this dull desert, all you can do is drink and He nods. Okay, okay. so, well, I guess, Something I guess, well, you have some problems with alcohol, Jack huh? looks at the bottleneck sticking out of his pocket. Nah, there are problems with water here, not with alcohol. There's still so much of it that my liver could give up. Uh, yeah, well, that's how you could look at it as well. All right, then. So I think we should meet again um, at the administration level uh, in Magellan. Jack puts a good face on, but he seems to be upset. Fine. If you happen to miss my company, I'll be on the executive floor of the Magellan. Yeah. See you there. Okay. So, and then Sparrow. Let's have Sparrow along. Sparrow. Sparrow Long time no see. Your hand tightly. I was afraid that something irreparable had happened and these whites simply sacrificed you. These people believe in science, not principles. Of course your death would not have been in vain, but I'd still feel sorry for losing you. Well, you know, that is nice to hear. Well, what happened while we were in the emulator? What do you know? Sparrow wrinkles his forehead. If I understood everything correctly, you were immersed in the very epicenter of radiation. I looked at you and saw that you were just standing there in the fog, day after day. Oh, so long? It's not clear whether it's you or, I don't know, your corpse maybe? Well, you know, sometimes uh, when you are inside the maelstrom, time 
is, you know, passing very slowly, apparently, or rather very, very quickly outside. But well, come on, let's talk a bit the more. The sparrow's face lights up with a smile, the same one you saw on the day you met. You yeah, can count right. on me. I will stand side by side with you. Together, we will do much more for this world than apart. I'm in. Sparrow nods at you with a serious face. Well, I like—I really like your attitude, now Sparrow. Don't worry What's about this? Katagina. I'll protect her. Um. Oh, I think we have a bug. I think we found a bug here because we already had Sparrow. And we also had Sparrow in the party a number of times. Katarzyna, do you want to be protected? Well, okay then, so let's have a look. Sparrow, oh yeah, she's got this here, the Azure Great Coat. Is it better than this? Oh no. Yeah, it looks like the plot armor code is something that we are not going to use with anybody. Biochem damage. Cryo. Energy is even 25. Evasion is plus 5. Okay. Yeah, it's still way better. I think all in all. I would really love to see the action point though. Okay, can we actually put this one away there okay and the boots parsec boots she's got the daedalus which is also the movement speed movement is not that relevant with her but i actually like the heat resistance as well heat yeah i think actually oh uh, yeah yeah i mean they are also worth 50 more so you can imagine it's better and this is the belted pants and well we do have this here Ah, oh, yeah. Belted pants have evasion plus five. Yeah, but in this case, I actually think because we have also the fortitude in, uh, increase, evasion is 54. So I think. I can just take off that. I think actually, yeah. I think that works nicely. And then you get the Archimedes belt. They are very nice. And we even have some some stuff for you to wear. So what is it? Can you do anything? You are good at psionics and light weapons. And you are pretty good at medicine now, all right. Preventive measures, fatigue resuscitation, pharmacology and bring someone to senses. You can do first aid, all right. Well, that's good to know. Um, hand to hand tech, and these ones, they were forty to hand to hand and tech as well. Yeah. Well, then we could give you the researcher's gloves, so you, you get at least five uh, biochem. But on the other hand, we, we need the signs. What is it, actually? We have also researcher gloves. Ah, yeah, okay. Now then uh, they are actually the same. Ah, yeah, okay. Then Sparrow can wear them just for the biochem resistance. The other stuff is just, it's just tech. Fortitude and tech. So, okay, then we can actually get rid of the other stuff. On this John, yeah, it's worse. Okay, and we don't have anything for the head or this year. Well, actually, Sparrow could actually wear the uh, the the armor, the other armor that we have. Let's try that at least for a while because we don't have any any stuff here, and it would also fit her pretty nicely, I think. Upgrade the pistol, Justice. I certainly like the Justice. And yeah, we can upgrade it. Very nice. Yeah, we do. That's what we are going to do. Okay, that's good. So let's keep uh, Sparrow on the par in the party for ma for a while. But let's talk to her or him. Sparrow shuffles his feet impatiently, but he looks deadly serious. 
and therefore funny. So what? What's the plan? Let's not delay. Bastards won't punish themselves. Well, you know, the plan hasn't changed. We are saving the world so you can come down. Companion smiles. That's a great plan. Yeah, exactly right. So, come on, let's talk for, for a bit. Kindly. I'm always happy to chat with a comrade in arms on any subject. That's good. So, come on, let's talk about the various forces on the, do the dome. Excited. The dome is a battlefield where people of honor fight against carrion eaters. We have the power to stand on the side of truth and justice. That's good to know. What's your opinion on, of the new committee? Your companion's eyebrows dart up angrily. A bunch of sly bureaucrats, liars, bastards, and cowards. That place is the source of all injustice under the dome. The ultimate evil. Okay, well that is that is a strong opinion there. But well, and what do you think about the picnic? If everyone under the dome became like those people in picnic, it would mean my efforts had not been in vain. Though they weren't in vain anyway. He shakes his head in time with his thoughts. Yeah, I don't think so either. And what about the phalanx? Sparrow clenches his teeth. Cronus gave criminals freedom, and the phalanx united them into a gang. What else is there to say? I thought the phalanx you know, consisted of the Black Wing and a lot of uh, ex -secu or, or security con uh, personnel, and they only had some Orange Wingers with their criminal background in them. But well, that's also a pretty strong opinion. And Carmen Heights? Companion ponders. They gave everyone voting privileges. But does that make sense if they're extended to bastards and murderers as well? That isn't good democracy. If they continue on this way, Zemeckis will end up in power. Oh, we hear the name Zemeckis again. So Zemeckis seems to be a, a negative character, a negative person. Maybe even a criminal or a gang leader or something on or underground, like a kingpin or so. But you know, Sparrow, democracy means that everybody has the same rights, even bad people. That's the thing. Human rights are universal. They apply to everybody. That's that's the, the whole point about them. Yeah, you can just strip them away. So, and what about the church? I never said it, but I considered leaving for the world they created to be the person I always dreamed of being. But there's something off about them. Okay. But you know you can yeah you can be the person you want in real life anyway and what about the fox barrel frowns they cause innocent people to suffer i don't like killing madmen but i have to edmund burke once said all that is necessary for the triumph of Attention. evil is that good men do nothing that's the case here in case of damage, or women yeah but yeah well i do i do i'm quite of the same opinion actually don't like killing madmen or any man, but we have to sometimes. Well, so let's talk Your about something else. Nods kindly. I'm always happy to chat with a comrade in arms on any subject. Can we talk about something personal? Personal? Sparrow inquires warily. Oh, yeah, well. So, well, you. That is interesting. Like, why did you become a bandit hunter? And with seen a lot for a long time that you you've got a certain distaste for white wing why is that but well i guess at some other point we'll talk about that okay then let's move away we can't talk about anything with sparrow so and time has progressed significantly but well let's talk to these other guys here so we did everything oh yeah i know the guy here sebastian oh, van olden katarzyna what? Balistkaya turns red and pale, wringing her fingers hysterically. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, please not the jail. It's dirty and filled with criminals. Can we make a deal? What? Why? Why is he seeing her? What? Adolf Schmidt frowns indignantly. You should be put right away where you should be. But first I want to talk to your commanding officer. Uh, yeah, let's go there. Hey, what's going on? I don't like you. 
Adolf Schmidt turns us and squints unkindly. I am in charge of security here. You know the rules. You are responsible for the crimes of your companions. Why? What did Katarzyna do? You are violating the General Dome Code, Article 21, Paragraph 2, Trespassing, he frowns. Or did she just run in there or what? Adolf Schmidt gives us a long unfriendly look. I know people like you, you create problems for people, so I will create problems for you. Everyone will learn of your exploits. Oh, we are sorry about that that crime. He wrecks our confession with a discreet disbelief. Uh, I reflect this in the report as well. Scram. She yeah, she ran in there. Why? Katarzyna. Why did you do that? But I just uh, I just saved the game, right? Yeah. So well then, let's just detach you guys. Eh, uh, that there. We wanted to talk to the guy, so I don't even know why this door is open. But we're not allowed to be in there. So, where were we? It saves some time. Yeah, you ask, I answer. What do you need? Well, oh, you, oh, 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 an Andromeda of level six. Oh, nice. It's worth 4,250, though. Well, but we are not looking at that. Well, you know, we are not interested in any relic dust today or through the CPS or so, well, luck. Not interested. Then, let's go over here. And then there's another person there. So with Henrietta we've talked. Otherwise it doesn't look like there's anybody here. Harry Daimler. Harry Daimler, one of the emulator test subjects who had been suffering in an isolation chamber without cigarettes, is now walking freely around the building. He's smoking the cigarette clamped between his teeth with an expression of perfect serenity. Hey, how do you feel now? Harry breaks into a wide and very happy grin. Oh, my head is very good. I don't know how to describe this feeling more precisely. Maelstrom hardly feels. It's out there away, but now it's so hard, like a seed. Uh-huh. What are you doing? Daimler spreads his hands. Well, I'm getting, I'm getting by however I can. Maelstrom has retreated and they are not paying for tests anymore, so I got a side job with security here. Thank God I can get smokes all the time now. Okay. Well, you only have nails and other stuff, so let's do this. Ladies, come up. Or oh, like Sparrow. Sorry. I don't know why, why, how you identify, really. Or well, like she, uh, he identifies as a man, right? So it's too much for me personally. So too much to understand, but I want to respect it, of course. So here we go. But Sparrow needs needs uh, therapy probably. So, Sebastian, let's... Oh! Oh, I guess... Oh, we can't steal. We can't steal anyway. So I guess we need to buy this thing. Well then, let's buy the... Let's buy this one. Let's buy the Andromeda. That is way better than we have... Than what we have. So, we don't like you, but we want this pistol. The laser pistol. And that is very costly, apparently. But you can have the Honest John work code because we definitely... Oh, no, no. We, we are carrying it around because it has a plus 15 criminal, of course. That's the reason. That's the whole reason behind it. And then these Parsec boots. I can't... I'm... I'm I, I, can't, I just can't sell them, but we can sell the belted pants. Because they don't give any bonus, right? No, they don't. So, and we have better stuff. And the plot armor code. I mean, it's gone. We sell it, it's gone. But uh, I think we will not give anything to anybody anyway. So, let's give it away. Off you go. Um. Well, and that's it. 
that's all that we are selling so let's just give uh, the guy some more money and like that no oh why is that there and these 20 do we have other stacks no we don't So we need uh, 500, 500 and maybe and 50. Like that. There you go. Accepting. Moving away. And now we've got a pretty nice pistol here. Andromeda. This modified version of the Andromeda represents a massive bug fix. Every component has been upgraded and refined from the firing lens configuration to small comfort improvements like a more ergonomic grip. 30 to 35. From 19 to 23. Crit is unaffected 18 meters range oh yeah nice four additional meters and this one has also eight shots 200 percent for the crit modifier jamming chance two percent was before three moderate loudness reloading is two yeah that is pretty nice very nice indeed that's worth it okay but we can't steal from the guy so let's go here and how about someone closes this door here? There. So no one runs in there. Okay. So, and I think... Oh, there's a trash bin. Oh, they can't you can look through huh yeah well let's just look in there we are not sneaking for that oh even some plastic there washing the hands looking in the mirror we wink at our reflection no more thirst and that's fine so there you go saving the game and this ends this episode there was a lot of talking um but yeah i think uh we we actually found out a lot uh, about the situation right now so the um the people this behind the emulator project come in height so they are actually like also with nakamura we already know that she's not a nice person like here, Common Heights, Maelstrom, the Fobs, the committee, no, the committee, that's the uh, the nasty one, right? Common Heights uh, is the adherents of science and democracy, yeah. Uh, they are the ones. Career Ladder and the Mandum Corporation, yeah. Well, I mean, we've worked with them but they are possibly not the not the kindest faction but we'll see so and in the next episode we are going to check out what's going on and then we'll see what what's happening at the meeting thanks for watching guys i hope you found this one enlightening i like in case a lot and you can really uh, feel that uh, you know a professional science fiction writer uh, wrote a book and this whole thing is based on it and I think they, they did a very good job here with this game and I come to really love it um, yeah and we'll see how things go thanks for watching we are continuing next time I hope you liked this episode if you did please do click the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel just hit the subscription button and the little bell icon um, so you're getting notified and you are never ever missing an episode again and you know that also is very free of charge you don't have to pay anything and 
you are helping the channel at the same time as well. So it's a total win-win situation. Thank you so much. See you next time. And if you have any thoughts you wish to share, please do so in the comment section. Bye-bye.